hope you fine folks are ready to put on your disco shoes, flare out your pants, and fluff up your chest hair. Because once again, Baywatching is going back to the 70s. Yes, that's right, we're going to be talking about the 1976 film Lifeguard, a movie you most certainly have never heard of. Why the hell am I talking about Lifeguard? Because I'm pretty certain this was a heavy inspiration for Baywatch. I'm sure the hype is real, so let's jump in the deep end. Lifeguard, a Paramount picture directed by Daniel Petrie and written by Beauty and the Beast creator Ron Coslow, stars an extremely young Sam Elliott as Rick, an aging lifeguard who must decide between the waves and a grown-up job. It's a character piece largely meant to appeal to the nostalgia of old surfers at the time. Hey, speaking of nostalgia, y'all remember Craig Pomeroy? Well, looky looky who features in this. Believe it or not, Parker Stevenson was wearing the red shorts long before Baywatch, and his hair is poofier than ever. Oh, how I've missed that long, unbroken eye contact. His casting in this movie is certainly a big part of why I wanted to talk about it, but it isn't just the fact he's playing a lifeguard. More about that in a second, but first, I want to talk about how handsome Sam Elliott is. Wild man Ricky Carlson, the living legend. Yeah, something like that. Hey fam? Fam. Real talk. Dreamboat, right? Which is weird, because Sam Elliott seems like someone who is just born old, and yet is delectable at any age. He just has this indescribable charm about him, someone who can say so few words and have such a large impact. And he is definitely compelling here. He's someone you want to root for. He carries the entire movie. A lesser actor would have made this an absolute chore. But I found this very interesting to watch, and 1970s guy waffles about his job doesn't necessarily sound like a gripping plot synopsis. As this is a movie with 70s pacing and a character piece, rather than go scene by scene, I just want to give a nice, breezy overview of this thing. Oh, 70s. 70s, how you love to test me. I am drawn to your gaudy disco glam, and yet repulsed by your otherwise brown and lifeless aesthetic. When will we find a common middle ground? It seems we will always be at war. Speaking of which, hey, uh, there's definitely some things in here that were only acceptable then. <laughs> Good fun. Good fun! This is fine. It's fine! This film's relationship with women is like Mitch's relationship with food. Messy, borders on parody, and is a sign of a much deeper problem. Rick's a real loner type. He loves him and leaves him. Think Desperado. That is, until he gets back together with his high school girlfriend and considers settling down. Okay, so far that's not so bad. Oh, by the way, he sleeps with a 17-year-old. Do you like plots about someone in their 30s sleeping with a minor? And then stringing said minor along? And then the minor becoming obsessed with them to the point of suicide? <laughs> that's just how it was back in the good old surfing days. I know I'm kind of a monster, but I'm just so charming you won't even notice. Damn, he's right! Sam Elliott, why are you so sexy? Does this plot sound familiar to you, though? A troubled teen becomes obsessed with a lifeguard who is torn between staying on the beach or getting a grown-up job? It should, because that's the premise of Baywatch's pilot. And who starred in that? Parker Jeepers Creeper Stevenson. Craig is a lifeguard in his 30s, trying to decide if he should be a lifeguard or a lawyer, when he rescues a troubled youth who becomes romantically obsessed. Now, I've not actually read anywhere that Gregory Bonan was directly inspired by this film when creating Baywatch, but I have to believe that Michael Burke and Douglas Schwartz definitely had this in mind when they were writing the script for the pilot. Call it an homage, if you will. Except they decided to make it a thriller at the end and they blew up an old guy, which automatically makes it the superior film. <laughs> This also makes for a hilarious contrast to Baywatch's future. Think about it, someone in their 30s is ancient in lifeguard years. Which isn't to say it doesn't happen, but lifeguarding is a physically demanding job that just isn't feasible to maintain forever. Lifeguard makes a point of this when Rick participates in a race with a bunch of younger, more fit lifeguards and ends up making himself sick. Now look at Baywatch. 
In season one, Mitch and Craig are 37. Mitch has been promoted to a position more focused on office work, but that sure as hell doesn't last into the later seasons. By the end of their 11-year run, Mitch is nearly 50. Remember Captain Thorpe's midlife crisis plot where he tries to do rescues and then cramps up and realizes he's too old to do this anymore? He was only about five years older than Mitch is by the end. I realize this is probably the least unrealistic thing of Baywatch's many outlandish concepts, but it's just funny to think about. But before this Baywatching episode becomes too much about Baywatch, I just want to loop back to Lifeguard and say some nice things about it. It definitely has some not-so-nice aspects from the time, but I was interested from start to finish. The music is great, the acting is solid, some of the shots are pretty gorgeous. The parts where it solely focuses on Rick and his life and who he is are very watchable. If you're just watching to see Parker Stevenson, you're going to be kind of disappointed, because he doesn't feature in it very much. But I did find it cool to see him doing Baywatch pre-Baywatch. Looking at Lifeguard compared to Baywatch in the 90s, you're going to be seeing a vastly different animal. But when you set it next to Baywatch's humble beginnings, you can definitely see the evolution. Knock it off! Or get back your tower, Lifeguard. Do I recommend Lifeguard? Eh, not necessarily. I think there's probably a lot of people who'd be pretty bored by this. But me personally, I liked it for what it was. And as someone who reviews Baywatch for a living, I think it was interesting to see this clear progenitor. And now, let's see Lifeguard off into the sunset. Next time on Baywatch, eyebrows is back, baby! And pirates? Meanwhile, the show remembers Mitch was thinking about adopting a little orphan girl. 